Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. A very good morning. Welcome to Chart Busters. Well, this is a show where we'll highlight all the passing stocks of the day. Also get you some expert advice on how you can capitalize and trade. For the time being, the Nifty is trading more or less flattish. We did come off the high point of the day, but we're off the session's lows. So it's an interesting trading session. Uh, Thursday morning has started off on quite an exciting note, Maglam. Absolutely. Uh, that's as far as the frontline indices are concerned. Just keep an eye out on the Asian markets, though, Nigel. You know, uh, the, the Japanese index opened with a fair amount of green, and now that one's moved into the red. Most of the Asian markets are now at the lower end of today's trading range, so that is something we'll have to watch out for. In that regard, we're doing a relative outperformance, but what is underperforming is the mid-cap index. After a bit of a spurt yesterday, today, again, it's down about 100 points on the mid-cap index. Three stocks in the red, four one in the green. First up, all the top stories that we're tracking this morning. ONGC and Oil India are buzzing in trade as the companies will now have to pay royalty only to the extent of equity value that they have in oil and gas blocks awarded before 1999. The companies earlier, remember, had to pay 100% royalty and cess under the earlier production sharing contracts. And our show, Clayland, has recovered more than 8% from those of the day after the management tells CNBC TV18 that more than 60% of the medium and heavy commercial vehicles market will not be affected by the new axle norms, adds they will continue to focus on profitability but will not compromise market share. Mind tree, that's what sees profit booking post earnings, strong earnings, dollar revenue growth for the first quarter comes in at a 16 quarter high, however, management guides for slower revenue growth in Q2. And PVR and Inox Leisure, they were under pressure in early morning trade. They've recovered from the lows of the day. Remember, reports suggested that multiplexes and cinema halls in Hyderabad have ordered to sell food items at MRP. JK Tire posts strong results. Revenue growth jumps by 35%. Management tells CNBC TV18 that they will maintain margins at current levels with a revenue target of 10,000 crore rupees by FY19. GHCL, on the other hand, reports a weak set of numbers. Q1 revenue comes in flat at 754 crores, while the EBITDA slips 3%. That stock down 3% as well. Well, there's a bit of a recovery on in certain stocks. You know, I pull up the metal index because some of these metal stocks, like likes of Tata Steel, you have GSPL, they've recovered a good bit uh, from the lows of the day. Remember, the, the, uh, the metal index on the whole has seen selling pressure in the last few trading sessions, but, but good recovery there. And it's only Thursday, but remember, United Spirits and United Beauties, for this week itself, both of them have lost nearly around 10 to around 12%. Now, from the session's lows, we're seeing a sharp recovery both on United Spirits and United Beauties at one point of time was down nearly around 5%. So that's cut its losses as well. Keep an eye out on a couple of those stocks. How do you trade the Nifty from here though? Ashwini Gujral with us. Ashwini, what's the trade on the Nifty? Well, as long as we don't get back above, you know, broadly 11,000, today's high, mm -hmm. I think all recoveries will get sold into. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, large and, you know, haloed stocks are coming off. Things like HDFC, HDFC Bank, TCS, Infosys, Bajaj Finance. So, uh, you know, what's going up are PSU banks, etc. So, this sort of recovery often does not sustain. So, right now, good enough time to get short. My sense is 10,950. The risk to that zone continues. And uh, once the selling resumes, uh, that may get taken out, if not today, probably tomorrow. But uh, the market showing great reluctance to get back above 11,000, and that is uh, weakness for the bulls. Having said that, uh, Bajaj Finance is a sell with a stop of 2460, target of uh, 2380. Infosys is a sell with a stop of 1340, target of uh, 1280. And Titan is a buy with a stop of 848, target of 870. All right, tighten a buy uh, uh, from Ashwini. Ashwini, a word on Raymond. That stock from the mid-cap space is moving higher. Apart from that, we have PVR as well. Remember, there were earlier a lot of news reports suggesting uh, 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 people would be allowed to take uh, food into the multiplexes. Now there are reports that Hyderabad cinemas out there, they have to sell uh, only on the maximum retail price. But the stock seems to have recovered from the lows, a good 6%. Uh, any, any moves out there in terms of what the chart suggests? Raymond and PVR? Well, you know, these sort of recoveries like in Ashok Leyland and 
Raymond, PVR. These are basically profit booking by, you know, short positions, etc. Mm -hmm. I don't think uh, you will get great follow through immediately. I think a lot of basing and, you know, waiting for things to work out will happen. So don't go by recoveries. The recoveries are only there in smaller stocks. If I have to play, uh, I'll probably look at Titan where, uh, you know, the recovery is already underway. All right, Ashwini. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, we will keep coming back to you all through the course of the day. In the meanwhile, let's also cut across to Mr. Hemant Luthra, the chairman or the management of Mahindra CIE Automotive, addressing the press on their second quarter current year performance. A good, uh, good growth on the revenue. The net profits also grew about uh, one and a half times. So let's cut across. We safely left in the hands of the f um, of the uh, majority shareholder. It reflects CIE's strength and confidence in Mahindra CIE. And I look forward to being with you again next quarter and see where this growth story is taking us. Thank you all very much. And that's about it for today. Individual stocks, they're surging from the mid-cap space. PVR, for instance, that one should come up for you. We were talking about this, and now it has recovered almost about 7-8% from the low point of the day. We have PVR out there. NBCC so showing some bit of recovery as well. Along with that, uh, uh, we have IFCI and BEL. After some underperformance, they are also buzzing as we speak. The mid-cap index, however, still down about 100 points. One stock on our radar right now is Mahindra CIE Automotive. Delivered a strong set of second quarter CY18 numbers. To discuss this and more, we have Mr. Hemant Luthra, the chairman of the company, joining us now. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers, Mr. Luthra. First up, you know, uh, for the first half of this year, your revenues have grown by about 38%. Can you just ask somebody to improve the volume, please? Right. Uh, uh, we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll get that uh, sorted. In the meanwhile, uh, can, you, can you hear us? We'll try to speak up a little bit, Mr. Luthra. I'm getting a lot of echo, but... All right, I think we'll go just... On, go on. I think... Uh, all right, we'll just rectify that in a couple of minutes and we'll get back, I think, uh, uh, to the management of uh, Mahindra CI. I think for the time, let's move on. Uh, uh, you know, if uh, we could pull up uh, a few stocks or maybe, in fact, uh, you know, yeah, we, we let's, let's uh, you know, shift focus to the real estate space. Real estate uh, giant Lotha Developers is gearing for its second attempt at an IPO, the firm plans to raise around 5,000 crore rupees via listing, which is expected later this month. CNBC TV 18's Kevin Lee caught up with Abhishek Lodha. Let's hear out what he had to tell us. As for the DRHP, we intend to raise 3,750 crores as the primary issue, and we have an offer for sale of 1.8 crore shares, of which 80% of the money will come back into the company. Uh, so it's a significantly uh, primary issue, and uh, out of the money raised, about 4,500 crores will be used for prepayment of debt. What is your current debt at and what will it go down to after this? Uh, so we uh, will be at a debt of 13,500 crores after this raise, which will be a debt equity ratio of about 1.6, 1.7. Over the next three years, we expect to be much more uh, deleveraged with our Devco becoming virtually debt free and all our debt being linked to our rental assets. Now you have tried to go in for an IPO in 2009, that was shortly after the global financial crisis, so it's understood why you didn't go through with it. What has changed between now and then? Is it a much better place for real estate? Because in general, the market doesn't seem to be doing that well. There there has been consolidation. Some players like yourself are doing well. Is this a big reason that you're going in for it now? See, as a company, we have grown a lot. We've become, like I said, much more organized, much more governed. We have a much, much bigger scale of operations. Last year, we did over 9,000 crores of revenue, over 8,500 crores of collections from customers, over 8,100 crores of uh, net new sales. We delivered over 11,000 units, which is not only by far the largest in our country, but the largest delivery of multi-storied homes and offices anywhere in the world outside China. And in that context, we see there is huge opportunity ahead, especially in the mid-income housing space. We are clearly, you know, last year, 40 4% of our sales were in mid-income housing, what is called affordable housing. And uh, we think that we have cracked the code of how to do that at a large scale in a quality manner at affordable prices. And we think that there is a lot of demand for that in the country. And we want to use this capital to strengthen our balance sheet and continue to grow our business, especially in the mid-income affordable housing uh, uh, segment, while uh, delivering strong ROEs. You've been carrying this debt around for a while. It's been a bit of a burden. Now you're saying that you're going to reduce that uh, to 13 and a half thousand crores. You also said in the presentation inside that you aim to be a debt-free company uh, by 2022. After this IPO goes down, now you've mentioned that you want to focus on the rental business, um, apart from middle income and affordable housing. What is the plan for the rest of that debt? 
so, uh, you know, as I'm constrained from not making any forward-looking statements, like I mentioned, we'd be, we intend to be debt-free on the Devco, the development company. There will be debt on the rental company. What is the total amount of debt on the rental company as of now? About 2,700 crores. Okay. Now, this IPO has coincided with uh, Moody's finally changing its outlook to positive on you. Is there a chance that you'd be looking to recycle some of the old debt that you're carrying now that it's possible for you to maybe raise cheaper funds? Uh, certainly, uh, we will look at optimizing our cost of money, absolutely. All right, so that was the exclusive conversation that we had with Lodha, but uh, we have managed to fix the connection with Mr. Hemant Lutra, the chairman of Mahindra CIE, joining us after what was a strong set of second quarter 2018 performance. Uh, thanks a lot, Mr. Lutra, for joining in. I believe the audio is clear now. 45% uh, growth in the quarter gone by, 38% growth in your revenues in the first half of this year. What kind of growth are you pegging at for the whole of this year? And next year, what is the growth that you're looking at? Because then if it grows at these levels right now, you'll be having a higher base. See, I don't want to get arrested, so I'm not going to forecast um, what uh, specific numbers, but I think the momentum that we have will continue. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get 26% year-on-year growth, you have a serial growth between last quarter and this one. Uh, EBITDA is up 44%. Um, consolidated numbers are up uh, of the same order of magnitude between 25 to 30% in revenue and about 30% in EBITDA. Um, so yeah. we are confident that this momentum will continue. All right, you're sounding fairly confident, Mr. Lutra. And as you said, those numbers look quite good as well. But uh, if you could help us out with a couple of details. Firstly, what's the current capacity utilization levels, if you could tell us, in India as well as Europe? And also wanted to understand, uh, how are you outpacing growth in the European markets in particular? Because your numbers indicate that you are outpacing the European passenger vehicle growth by a mile. Yeah, we are outpacing uh, growth by miles. And part of it is because all the investment that we've made in the past and assuring customer that the quality that we'll have is of the kind that they expect, not just from us, but the international standard of uh, CIE. The other thing that has happened is that unfortunate, but for the guys who lost the business, but those who were maybe more aggressive than they need to have been and then has had to go into NCLT, their business has got transferred to us. Okay, mm -hmm. and. Um, we are now running to stay put. Um, uh, maybe that's wrong English, but we are running to keep up with demand. Um, everywhere, we are now putting in more capex. So, are you so, looking um, at uh, any Europe of those? Europe is running pretty close to capex. Are you looking at any of those NCLT cases? So everywhere, we are putting in more capex. No, the NCLT cases. So, instead of putting in capex, if you could tell us the nature of that capex, will it be brownfield, greenfield, or will you perhaps look at acquiring any of these beleaguered companies? Both. Okay, so uh, as far as CapEx is concerned, give me a chance because then it gets a little bit more granular. Okay, um, whether it is in Europe where we are running flat out in Germany, uh, whether it is in our European forging plants which is in Spain or whether it is in our Italian uh, gear plants. So everywhere we are running flat out. Fortunately, um, there are places like in England, where our demand is lower than what we expected, some fears of Brexit. So we're transferring some equipment from there to here. But between uh, all of that, given the impression that we'll have a revenue of about 8,000 crores, uh, 3 to 4 percent, 5 percent maybe of CapEx every year, about three 400 crores is planned, and it's planned across the board, whether it's in gears, forgings, castings, and all the business that we need to um, beef up on. Um, the issue with respect to investors is that our debt equity ratio after this quarter is less than 0 0.6. Our debt to uh, EBITDA, net financial debt to EBITDA is much less than one. There's enough cash in the system, so I don't think we need to do anything with respect to borrowing or an equity increase. Okay. So that is the organic part of it. The inorganic part of it is that we still have some holes in our portfolio. Um, the holes in the portfolio may relate to aluminum, the holes in our portfolio may relate to how much more business we want to do with Maruti and Hyundai, who are the market leaders. Okay. So the acquisition strategy will be based around um, ex addressing those holes in our portfolio. Okay. And um, we also have a, so I was talking to Mr. Bhargav recently, 
and he said that Maruti intends to keep its market share of 50 percent and he is, uh, Maruti is investing about 5 billion mm -hmm. and I think he expects the suppliers also to keep pace with that investment. And not all suppliers, family-owned companies are going to be able to do that. So um, many of them are voluntarily coming to us because they love the model where we acquire a majority stake not just for control, okay. um, not at all for control, but much more for consolidation. And therefore, we induct them as partners as we've done with Billforge. So we will see some things happening, but I'm not going to put a date or a number. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Lutra, we get uh, all those points. You know, you're sounding fairly uh, optimistic. You're saying your balance sheet is uh, very, very healthy as of now. One worry that the street has is that Mahindra sold, I think, roughly around 5%, uh, you know, in the month of July itself. Will Mahindra look to sell more stake in Mahindra CIE? And if that happens, then does it affect, I... yeah, does it affect business in any way? Go ahead, sir. Um... I'm not Anand Mahindra and I'm not Anton Pradera. These are the issues between two shareholders. My job as the chairman of the company is to maximize the value for Mahindra CIE shareholders. Um, it's nice that Mr. Pradera and CIE sees India as a growth market, sees, loves what MCI is doing and therefore mm -hmm. bought the shares from Mahindra. Okay. Mahindra may have its own priorities with respect to what they consider core or non-core. Okay. But it does not affect business in any way at all. Mahindra okay. is still a very important customer. We are continuing to invest a large amount of our capex to meet their requirements. Okay. And at the same time, we are making sure that we have diversity of customers and not dependence on any one or more customers. So oh, that's a valid point you're making. Business as usual on the ground. That's a valid point, Mr. Luthra, you're making. But uh, just to understand, how much does Mahindra and Mahindra contribute to the standalone revenues and how much do they contribute to the consolidated revenues? See, Mahindra's uh, numbers are roughly about 35% of India revenue. Okay. Okay. But if you look at the global revenue, Mahindra numbers are less than, I think, 18, 20%. Okay. So we love the fact that they are 18, 20%. We love the fact that they've given us more orders. Let me make that absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. We love the fact that Bolero is doing so well that they want us to push us for more. We love the fact that they're buying more gears from us. So while we will increase the total volume of business for Mahindra, mm -hmm. okay, as a percentage of our total revenue, that will continue to come down as it has over the years okay. because more and more customers are also coming to us from different parts of the world. All right. Thanks a lot, Mr. Lutra, for joining in and giving us high point of the day. But we are off the lows as well. A couple of stocks that are doing well from the Nifty Pack itself. You have India Bulls Housing Finance. The interday chart should come up for you of that one. And also Titan. Mangalam just tell me they've come up with the new launch and that stock as well has spiked up in the last few minutes all Mangalam. Absolutely Nigel the new launch uh, I, I think uh, it launched about what five six days ago and you have holdings of that collection it starts with about two lakh rupees a piece so we'll have to watch out for how that pans out. India Bulls of housing, uh, housing finance in uh, like you pointed out is up about eight percent this week and Titan incidentally is also one of Ashwini's buy calls but let's move on to some earnings expected today we have Kotak Mahindra Bank the big one from the banking space reporting its first quarter numbers. Abhishek take it away. Hello. Abhishek, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I didn't hear you. Can you come again? Abhishek, uh, the numbers expected from Kotak Mahindra Bank? Well, uh, on Kotak Mahindra Bank, the street is anticipating the highest profit growth in last five quarters, and that is close to 27%. The net interest margin above 4.3% will be positive. Last quarter, it was at 4.35%. The loan growth in last three quarters has picked up, and it has been above 20%. So continuity of the same will be positive. Low-cost deposit share has been pretty strong for Kotak Mahindra Bank at 50.8%. Person. So asset quality is not a worry factor given the fact that asset quality has been between 2.3 to 2.5 percent. Last quarter it was at 2.22 percent. Our poll suggests an NI growth of close to 19 percent while net profit to grow at 27 percent. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much uh, for that. Uh... Abhishek, well, keep an eye on a few stocks in the broader markets. NBCC, that one's seen a sharp correction. In this year itself, it's lost more than 45% of its market capitalization. In today's trading session, massive volumes on that one. It's moving higher as we speak. There could be some shots that are covering out even on PVR because that stock has now recovered nearly around 6.5% from the low point of the day. And Godfrey Phillips, smoking hot as we speak, 
That one as well is uh, spiking up in the last few minutes. So keep an eye on a few of these stocks. Some of them have really got hit, but they are seeing a bit of a bound. JSPL is the other one that I'm looking at. Pull up the intraday chart of JSPL as well as Jet Airways. Both of them taking off, uh, you know, just in the last 30 minutes odd. The Nifty moves into the green, Manglam. Absolutely, Nigel. You know, uh, uh, Jet Airways also incidentally comes out of the FNO ban today, so perhaps that could explain the kind of moves that we're seeing there. The Nifty, as it has moved into the green, we have a couple of Tata Group stocks to thank uh, for it. We have Tata Motors, which has moved higher, Tata Steel, of course, and Titan is what we spoke about. Do not lose sight of the PSU banks as well. SBI has moved to the high point of the day, and some corporate-facing banks, in fact, Axis Bank too, has recovered a goodish bit from the low point, currently sitting at the high point of today's.